Hello, my name is Peter Škabla. I'm CFD support engineer and in this video I will show you how to set a pump tutorial from scratch. I opened new TCFD and the first thing I need to do is to save a new setup file. I click on save button, go to desktop, radial pump and here where I have my STL files of my radial pump, I select a name for my TCFD file. I name it pump. Press OK. And now new pump.tcfd setup file is saved. Now I change simulation type to pump. To apply the changes, I press Apply button. Now I can continue to my second tab, Simulation. In Section Simulation, I can decide if I want to solve only steady state simulation or steady state together with transient simulation. In my pump tutorial, I will use only steady state. Then I can select number of processors I want to compute, use for computation and my computer has six processors so I will use six. Then I can select which numerical order scheme I want to use and I will use first. Then there are convergent checks and convergence tolerance and if I want to know what these lines mean and what they do I can move with my mouse over them and if I stop for long enough the hint will appear. This is everything I wanted to set in simulation tab so I can close it and I press apply to apply the changes. I can continue to physics tab. In physics tab we can add gravitational acceleration but in turbo machinery cases it's not very important so we can neglect it. Then we can choose from physics properties between air, water or some other custom fluid. I used water with default physical properties. I let this case to be incompressible and also I do not change reference pressure. I can uh, allow computating or computation of uh, cavitation risk, but I don't want to in this case. I can continue to reference frames. In the reference frame, I can select any number of reference frames. This allows me to use multiple rotation reference frames. For example, if I have a double impeller pump, I can set two rotating components with different axes of rotation and uh, also origins and different rotating speeds. First reference frame is static. This one is mandatory and it will be in every case, in case you have uh, some components or patches which are not rotating. Second reference frame, second default reference frame is rotating one. In this case I have axis of rotation Z, so I don't need to change it. Also origin is in 0, 0, 0. What I want to change is rotation speed. My pump will have 1770 RPM. I press apply and continue to components. Section components is very important part of TCFD setup because here we decide what and how it will be meshed. 
First, there is scale factor. With scale factor, we can rescale the geometry if it's in different than standard units, which are meters. My geometry is in millimeters, so I rescale it with changing units to millimeters. Then I know that my geometry will have three components, inlet pipe, impeller and volute. So I increase number of components into three. Then there is geometry source. In my case, I will use STL files, but you can also use external meshes. To specify where TCFD should look for STL files, we need to select STL directory. I'm already in my case directory, and if, but if you are not there, navigate into your case directory where you have your STL files. Select the directory and press OK. After that, STL files are loaded into patches table. You can also name your component. I can name it pipe because it's inlet pipe, the first component. Reference frame stays static because the pipe is not rotating, only rotating component is impeller and we have full geometry so no larger number of periodic segments. I press apply. Then there is table patches. In this table uh, there are all STL files which are in STL directory we selected before. For the first component I will be using only inlet pipe inlet, inlet pipe outlet and inlet pipe wall. To use them for the first component I need to change the type from not used into inlet, outlet interface and wall. So I double click on not used. Now more options appear. I click again and I select inlet because inlet of inlet pipe is overall inlet of my pump machine. And when I click outside of the table, this line is highlighted with green and with this green color I know that this STL patch will be used in geometry mesh generation. I repeat the procedure with outlet, double clicking and uh, now I select outlet interface because between I need to specify the interface between first and second component. An outlet of the pipe is the same patch as inlet of impeller. They are identical and I need to connect them to connect these two components. So I select outlet interface, click outside of the table. Now outlet is also highlighted with green and to connect this outlet interface with second component I need to right click with mouse and connect it to component 2. Now this interface is connected to second component and uh, it's ready. Then I need to use pipe wall and here from this menu I select wall. This is everything from patches table because I do not want to change minimum and maximum refinement levels in this case because pipe is 
pretty simple and uh, they can stay like this. I'm also not using boundary layers in this case and uh, if I go to the right side I'm using zero mixing planes therefore there will be frozen rotor interface between inlet pipe and impeller. Parameter background mesh size sets the size of the cell in the mesh volume. To understand it better, I'm going to visualize the mesh together with background mesh size. First, I need to press apply. Then I need to click on the eye next to word components in pipeline browser. Now I can see the eye and it means that components from my components table, table are visible. Uh, I can rotate the geometry and see the inlet, wall and outlet of the pipe. Now to also see background mesh size, I can click on show background mesh wireframe. Right now, axes appear as a bounding box around my geometry or STL files because at the moment I did not set any values for background mesh size. These values need to be positive and I start with, let's say, 20 millimeters in every direction. Now the mesh appear or at least net and from this net I can see what will be the mesh size or cell size in mesh volume. This is very coarse or at least I think it's coarse so I am going to refine it by decreasing background mesh size parameters into 10 in every direction. After decreasing this parameter, now the net is finer and the cells in mesh volume will be also finer. This is fine enough, at least for a tutorial, and I can continue to internal point. To, for this component to be meshed properly, I need to set internal point inside of this component. I show internal point, I can see the sphere, and it's on the edge of my geometry. Now I do not want to see wire background mesh size wireframe anymore, so I hide it. And I want to place the internal point into my geometry. So I left click on the sphere with mouse and then I hold it and transfer the internal point into the component. And now when I rotate my pipe from every side, I see that internal point is inside. This is very important because if I selected it outside, then outside of the pipe would be meshed instead. I can hide internal point and press apply to apply the changes. Now this is everything for the first component and uh, 
below internal point there is also a graph which describes how my geometry looks like and how are separate components connected. At the moment we only set the first component. TCFD also knows that there should be second and third component but they are not connected and the outlet is not specified. What we specified is that inlet is inlet pipe inlet then that first component is called pipe and that it's static component and that inlet pipe outlet is interface which should be connected with second component. For this connection to be completed it also needs to be connected from other side. So it means that I have to connect impeller inlet with the first component and then the connection will be set properly. To do that and to set the second component I go up and switch to second component. Component 2 has its own independent setup and it means that we can again choose geometry source and we need to again specify what's the STL directory file. In this case we are already in directory STL so I only press OK and STLs are loaded into patches table. Then I can rename component name into impeller, change the reference frame into rotating because impeller is a rotating component. Number of periodic segments stays unchanged. And now I specify which patches are used. Impeller has plates. I select type blade, then there is hub. I select hub, then there is impeller. An impeller is interface between inlet pipe and impeller. So it means that this is inlet interface. And I need to connect it to inlet pipe. So I right click with mouse and connect it to pipe. Now when I scroll down I see that between pipe and impeller there is a thick line and this shows that my connection between these two components is set properly. Next thing or next patch is impeller outlet and this is outlet interface between impeller and volute. So I go down and select outlet interface. And again I need to connect it this connect this interface to another component. In this case it's component free or volute. And now when I look down I see that there is a connection from impeller side but it's incomplete because it's not connected from volute side. The difference between lines is obvious. This one is dashed because it's not complete. And the last part of impeller is shroud. Next I press apply and after applying the changes STLs are loaded 
into my view. Now I want to set background mesh size. So I show background mesh wireframe, set the background mesh size to the values I had in inlet pipe. And I see that this, that this wireframe is very coarse for impeller. It was enough for inlet pipe, but impeller needs more details because they are blades and there is no that much space as in inlet pipe. So I need to decrease background mesh size. Let's say to six, six and six. This is much finer, but if I rotate it and look closer, if I see the distance between blade trailing edge and outlet interface, which is outlet of our impeller, the distance between the end of impeller and blade trailing edge is not very small and with this background mesh size there would be one maybe only one cell between these two walls or parts so i decrease this value even more And also, I need to refine the mesh on the walls. Until this moment, I was refining only the volume of my geometry. And now, with minimum and maximum refinement levels, I also decide what will be refinement on the walls. So, I Mm. I refine it with increasing the refinement values. Refinement value 1, 1 means that the mesh on the wall will be refined once in comparison to background mesh size. This means that the initial cell size on the wall is also of size 444 four, four, but with refinement level 1 it will be the all sizes are halved once with refinement level 2 it would be halved twice so the size of the cell after the first refinement should be 2 and after second refinement, only one. This is tutorial which is already prepared, so I know that values which work should be like this. But if you are setting your tutorial or your case for the first time and you do not know what proper parameters should be, then I recommend you to do it multiple times, redo the meshing and check it visually if it looks good. So do not continue straight to calculation, but do the meshing multiple times and compare the results. More detailed description about meshing is in our different YouTube video tutorials. One of it is basic meshing with snappy hex mesh and the second can be one of our webinars when we describe how to use snappy hex mesh. Now, besides refinement levels, I want to specify number of mixing planes between impeller outlet and volute inlet. 
I change this value into 5, which means my mixing plane will have 5 planes for averaging values around circumference. And the last thing I did not set for this component is internal point. So I show it and now I need to put it inside of the impeller. I will try to put it somewhere here where I have quite large volume. I shift it to this side and now I zoom out and rotate the geometry to see that I pushed the sphere too far and I need to put it back again and rotate it and check it from multiple angles to see if it's really inside. Now it looks that internal point is correct. I can press apply. And before continuing to touch component, I need to specify the last thing I forgot. Besides selecting rotating reference frame, I need to also specify which patches are rotating. So in this case, I need to set rotating reference frame to blade and also hub and shroud. Setting rotating reference frame is possible even in non-rotating components if there are some patches which can rotate. So it's independent to reference frame of whole component. I press apply again and continue to third component. In component 3 I again need to specify STL directory from which I want to take my STLs. Press OK. STLs are loaded into patches table. I change the name of component into volute. Reference frame stays as static. And now I specify which patches should be used. Volute RSI connection is wall. Volute inlet is inlet interface between impeller and volute. So I select inlet interface and I also connect it to impeller. Then volute outlet is outlet and volute wall is wall. Press apply. And now volute appears. Then I need to choose background mesh size and for volute I choose the same background mesh size as for inlet pipe. Then there is an internal point and I need to shift it into the volute. It looks like it's inside. Okay. And now I check the component graph and I see that all the lines are thick. If the image is too small, I can double click on it and 
maximize the component graph and here I see everything. Inlet is inlet pipe inlet, pipe is static component, inlet pipe outlet is outlet interface connected to impeller inlet which is inlet interface. Second component impeller is rotating one and impeller outlet is outlet interface connected to volute inlet which is inlet interface of volute and volute is static and the outlet of the volute is overall volute from my geometry. So everything is set correctly, all interfaces are marked with fixed lines which are not dashed, they are set correctly. I can close it. This is a good check for me because if the component graph isn't connected with thick lines, I know that some connections are not set correctly. I can press apply and continue to next part. The next section is speed lines. In this section, we can set number of speed lines and number of computed points during the simulation. Every speed line has its own number of points which can be computed. What is a speed line? Speed line allows us to compute multiple rotation speeds, speeds during the simulation. When I increase the number of speed lines to two, in back in reference frames, I have multiple rotation speeds. The first is for speed line one, and the second one is for, is for speed line two. In this case, I do not want to use multiple speed lines. I just wanted to show it. But while I'm here, I can check if I have good direction of rotation. I see that axis of rotation is in direction of Z plus and the right hand rule says that if my thumb points in the direction of axis of rotation, my fingers should spin in the direction of rotation. But in this case, my fingers spin in clockwise direction but my impeller should rotate counterclockwise. And that's why I have to either change the axis to opposite direction, or I can change the direction with changing sign in rotation speed. I decide to choose this option and now my pump will rotate correctly. I can get back to speed lines. I want only one speed line because I don't want to use multiple rotation speeds for this machine and I will compute let's say three points. For this tutorial it's enough to compute 500 iterations but for different cases and if you are not sure what it will take, usually I recommend to use much more iterations, even two to three thousand iterations, in compressible cases even more, four to seven thousand iterations as a starting point. If the computation converges faster, then it can be easily stopped because of the con convergence check if it fulfills the convergence criteria. But in this case, 500 is enough. I can continue to turbulence. In turbulence, I can set multiple turbulence models, but I let it be and uh, use K-Omega SST model. 
and also I can use different wall treatments but I will use standard wall functions then there are boundary conditions I apply the changes and save my setup before making any other changes just to be sure Inlet boundary conditions. First, I can set how do I want to specify turbulent inlet quantities. Then I can increase inlet bound number of inlet boundary conditions if I have uh, multiple inlets. And then I'm ready to set boundary condition type on my inlet. In this case, I will use volumetric flow rate. I want to set volumetric flow rate in different units, so I switch it to liters per second. And I want to compute 176 liters per second, 156 liters per second, and 136 liters per second. I do not change turbulent quantities and continue to outlet boundary conditions. Here I can also set multiple outlet boundary conditions if I have multiple inlets and then I have boundary type. In this case I use fixed mean pressure and I can leave outlet pressure to be zero pascals because I already specified reference pressure in physics step. I can continue to initial conditions. In initial conditions, I have two options how to set them. I can set them manually or I can map them from previously computed case. I can use previously computed case if the mesh is very very similar or identical to my case but in this case I do not have any cases computed before so I will use manual option I do not have to change pressure and I will change velocity in the direction of my inlet to 001 I do not change turbulent val values and I can continue to simulation controls. Here I have relaxations and bounding limits, but I do not need to change them. And the last part is post-processing. Here I can decide over how many iterations my final average values will be averaged. Then I can decide what report units I want to use. I can specify multiple efficiency probes. If I want to, and then there are forces, blade to blade views, meridional, meridional averages, surface samples, and more post-processing options. But this is everything for my case. I do not need to make any changes here. So I just press apply. Save the changes into TCFD because while I'm in uh, user interface, every changes, every change is stored here. But if I closed my user interface without pressing save button, all the changes would be lost. So it's always good to save everything before continuing. Now, this is everything to my setup and I can continue to TCFD manager. And here I can compute, but 
this video tutorial was about how to set a pump so it's everything from my, my side video is very long so thank you for your attention